Hello and welcome to lovely English stories. Thank you for stopping by. This story is written for advanced English learners. Ready? Let's get started. C1, C2 English story. The Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution began around 1760 as Britain changed from a predominantly farming community into one of manufacturing due to a huge development in industry and technology. New machines were invented and the creation of railways meant transportation was much faster. These changes created employment in the towns and cities, although working conditions were often dangerous, especially for children. Coal mining became important during the Industrial Revolution. Coal yielded a higher amount of energy compared to wood fuels. Early coal extraction was small-scale as the coal seams were close to the surface of the ground. After a number of advances in mining techniques, coal was found in layers which were up to 500 feet underground. However, as mines became bigger and deeper, problems emerged. Danger caused by flooding, toxic gases and collapsed roofs was common. Thomas Newcomen developed a machine to pump water out of the mines, alleviating some of the hazards. Alongside men, women and boys were employed to pull heavy coal carts. They endured harsh working conditions for up to 12 hours a day in 1842. At this time, children were often beaten and women mistreated. Discovering this, the public were horrified and an Act of Parliament was passed that no child should work under the age of 10. Another coal-related employment for young children, mostly boys at this time, was working as a chimney sweep. These men employed boys from about the age of 5 to 10, although sometimes as young as 3 who were small enough to climb and clean out the chimneys. It was a harsh profession and could severely cut short the boys' lives. They were often orphans or from poor backgrounds, sold into the job by their parents. The master sweep became their guardian, meaning that until adulthood there was no route to escape. In large houses, the chimneys were often a labyrinth of bends and junctions which were filthy and dangerous. Many would still be hot, therefore the boy's skin could be stripped raw from the friction. Worse, they could become jammed needing to be pulled out by a rope. The less fortunate would suffocate and die forcing others to remove bricks from the chimney in order to dislodge the body. Due to the terrible conditions, many did not reach adulthood because of bone and lung problems. Loss of sight on account of the effect of constant soot in the eye was also common. One of the first industrial cancers known as soot wart, which attacked the scrotum, as boys reached their teenage years, was identified. In 1875, a bill was passed forcing sweeps to be licensed and registered with the police. Eventually, the hiring of child chimney sweeps was stopped, ending the barbarity, neglect, abuse and forced labour. Another industry which was prevalent at this time was brick making, which was operated by a whole family. The moulder who made the bricks usually employed his wife and children to assist. 
Clay with which to make the bricks had to be dug on site and was located just under the topsoil to minimise the demanding work of digging with hand spades. Children would be expected to carry lumps of clay to be mixed after any stones had been removed. The correct consistency for moulding was reached by kneading with bare hands and feet. This was called tempering or pugging and was very hard work. The children had to push barrows of clay to be moulded and then take away wet bricks to be laid to dry out. The bricks were modelled by hand into wooden rectangular moulds with no base or lid. Blocks were fashioned on the ground and known as place bricks. As there was widespread poverty, children needed to help their families to earn money even though the work was dirty and could be hazardous. A change in the law in the 1860s prohibited very young children from working, eradicating child labour from the practice. The industry of matchstick making employed girls as young as six in the factories. Many developed a horrible disease called Fossy Joe, which led to facial disfigurement and sometimes death. It was necrosis of the jawbone caused by phosphorus poisoning. The ends of the matchsticks were dipped into the toxic chemical which made the matches easier to ignite. Working in cramped dark conditions put the children at risk of also contracting tuberculosis and suffering rickets. Phosphorus which hung in the air gave their clothes a fluorescent glow in the darkness, indicating the amount of toxicity at their workplace. Long hours, low pay and dangerous working environments sparked the Match Girls Strike of 1888. After this, some improvements were made, but it was many years before white phosphorus in matches was banned. The Industrial Revolution saw the mistreatment of women and children and men turned into work machines. Today, thankfully, there are many organisations which promote healthy working conditions and human rights in every industry. Now let's go through some of the advanced vocabulary from this story. Eradicate to eradicate. To eradicate means to get rid of or completely destroy something. Hazardous. Hazardous. If something is hazardous, it is dangerous and will cause damage. Orphan. Orphan. An orphan is a child whose parents have died. Predominantly. Predominantly means mostly or mainly. Alongside. Alongside means next to or together with. Coal. Coal. Coal is a hard black substance that is dug from the ground and burnt as fuel to provide heat. Filthy. Filthy. If something is filthy, it is extremely dirty. Friction. Friction. Friction is the fact that one thing rubs against the other. Harsh. Harsh. If someone or something is harsh, then they are unpleasant, unkind, cruel or more severe than is necessary. Labour. Labour. Labour is physical or and practical work. Mining. Mining. Mining is the process of getting coal or metal from under the ground. Neglect. Neglect. To neglect is to fail to look after someone or something.
We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story and the vocabulary explanations. Thank you for stopping by. Get productive and check out our language learning productivity packs and stories on Etsy. Use code YouTube10 for 10% off. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. See you soon.